thank you very much. Hello everyone, this is Rick with XYZ Modeling and Graphics. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Star Wars The Augustini Build Your Own X-Wing. Today we're looking at month number 18. And be sure to stick around after the video for our first episode of What's on the Bench, as well as viewer comments coming your way. As usual, we're going to open up our packaging and double check the contents, make sure everything's present and accounted for, and that nothing has been damaged during shipping. In this stage, we're going to be assembling the rear fuselage and battery pack, which will hold the four AAA batteries, giving us a six volt power supply. And we're going to get everything opened up here. Pretty quick stage, not too much going on with it. But uh, to start off, we're going to take our main piece and we're going to be connecting it to our other fuselage part that came with issue number 66. The first thing we're going to do here is uh, apply the or fit the brace onto the the new fuselage part that we received in this issue and then we're going to place that inside the fuselage portion you want to be careful not to trap those wires that are leading to the wing sensors that sense when the wings are opened and closed And next we want to secure that part with five XW08 screws. And I'm just gonna speed this up a little bit. Keep this video from being too long. Don't wanna bore you guys. Well, you just simply screw these into place. Nothing too tricky here. And again, you wanna be mindful when you're twisting these screws and not to over tighten. You just want to tighten just enough to ensure that that piece is firmly in place and no more than that. But that about wraps up this issue that completes stage number 69 and we'll see you at the next stage. All right, let's get going with issue number 70. So in this issue, we're going to be assembling the electric motor and gearbox. This will turn the head of R2 and provide the electrical contacts for the power to the, to the LEDs inside R2. And it bears some similarities to the gearbox that we assembled to open and close the S-foils just on a slightly smaller scale. So I think now's a good time to jump into some subscriber comments. I'm gonna go back about a month since I'm so far behind. Trout and Chard writes, great stuff. Have you tried rubbing the flat black with very fine sandpaper to reduce the paint wear on the nose? It would work well with the paint chipping and give more variation. You can use it on the canopy frame as well. Just gently rub in the area you want until the black paint is sanded down enough for some of the undercolor to show through. Uh, more of a worn paint look than chipping. Also, with chips, the paint near the chip is usually muted, and you can see this technique to recreate, recreate that. Looking forward to the next vid. Yeah, those are great suggestions, Trout Chard. Um, I, I uh, kind of dabble with different things and different techniques, and I will admit that it's been quite some time since I had to apply any kind of wearing and uh, damage effects to a paint job. The last model that I worked on was the Enterprise model, and everything on that ship required showroom style quality so there was absolutely no weathering involved so i'm kind of getting back into the swing of it but i will apply those 
techniques that you suggested suggested and i will see how they work for me thanks man uh michael mitchell wrote if you own a gen 3 night vision goggle you would be able to see the ir beam and i believe you're referring to the remote control that i said you can test to see if the the uh, ir diode is actually flashing uh, I'm not sure what Gen 3 night vision goggles are, but I would guess that the majority of folks don't have those. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen that movie Step Brothers, but when I read this, I immediately thought of Will Ferrell wearing these big giant night vision goggles that only few people own. So anyway, uh, the camera might work too, or it does work actually. Uh, Mike also writes, makes you wonder, Patrick, how exactly the wings will be geared to open and close. Will you need that one gearbox or two? Well, you'll find out here later that you only do need the one. So uh, there would definitely not be room for two. So there's, there's one separate gearbox for the wings and then the one that we're assembling now for R2. All right, Mike, thanks. Uh, more Draka writes, just be careful with the gears in the gearbox. A lot of people who are ahead of you have found that one or two of the gears in the gearbox will end up breaking the teeth from the gears. Tom Krause had this problem with his build and is waiting for a replacement issue to arrive to get the wings working correctly. Roger that. Uh, I don't have that issue as of yet, but we'll we'll get more into the power uh, and um, the gearing and the the circuit board here later in the next uh, next stage. So I'll address that more. Thanks, more Draka. And we got one from Martin. Hey, Martin. Martin writes: Assembling the remote control. Are they really skimping on these things? We'll, we'll, we will be soldering up the circuit board, stapling the magazines, and manning the call centers on their next release. Good to see some different bits on this video. That bulkhead issue looks really hard. Uh, I think you're being sarcastic there. Uh, looking forward to the next video, and great video as always. And Sam, Simon's Jaguar interior is shaping up nicely. Yes, I agree. Uh, and yes, I, I definitely... Um, I'm reading the detecting the sarcasm in your your voice here your words saying that uh yeah we're putting together remote control is like are you kidding me like oh, there's nothing really satisfying about that um and yes we're probably saving them a few bucks on having some poor little kid in china assembling it for us but uh you know, as far as the soldering up the circuit boards, I almost wish they would have given us schematics for that board because, as you will find out here later, I had some challenges with it and still am. So, uh, so thanks, Martin. Um, Larry writes, uh, he's the next comment on, in line. Uh, hey, Larry, aloha. Uh, he says, aloha, Rick. Month 17 is certainly nice, and the fact that we're not building wings or engines anymore. Uh, have also had some issues lately with model space, but so far not on the X-Wing build. Been waiting on a full kit order he ordered back in the first part of January. Finally got all the parts for a Death Star diorama. Ooh, that's cool. I'm doing I'm uh, Death Star diorama I'm doing using Bandai small scale sets and ships. We'll have two X-Wings, a Y-Wing, Millennium Falcon, Standard TIE Fighter, and Darth Vader TIE Fighter. Lots of detail painting to do on this. Take care of Mahalo again for the update. Man, that sounds awesome, Larry. I can't wait to see that, uh, that diorama, the Death Star diorama. That would be really cool. Um, it sounds like a pretty big project, but I'm sure you are up to the challenge, my friend. So good luck with that. All right, Ryan writes, looking good. I use some CA just on the same type of stuff you're using it in. Those little bits that have a tendency to come off. I'm glad that they actually decide to make this and hopefully they come up with another craft. Yeah, I'm glad that they came up with the X-Wing too. I mean, there has been some challenges along the way, um, but I think overall when it's all said and done, it will uh, it will be worthwhile, uh, but there's certainly been some challenges. Uh, and thank you, Ryan, for the comment. And uh, Trout and Chard writes, uh, "What? No wings being built? I have joined the wrong channel. Ha ha ha! <laughs> Excellent stuff as always, mate. 
Thanks, Trout Chard. Yes, um, we are way past the wings now and moving on to bigger and better things. And thank God for that. So thank you. So hopefully I got to everybody. Uh, there is a, a list or in front of me of comments that I have not responded to. And there were a couple that I did respond to through the message board. But, um, I, and I'll get to a couple more here in a little bit because they're more relevant for the next issue or the next couple stages. So I'll, I'll revisit that. But for now, let's go ahead and check in with the build. I just completed installing the DC motor that connects to the gearbox that we just assembled. And right now I am mounting the little protective guard that goes around the motor. And be careful when you're doing this, there are some exposed electrical components and solder joints near the wiring. So just be mindful of that. Even the slightest bump with your thumb could break that connection at the solder joint. It would take some doing to, to damage the capacitor that is connected between the two to uh, positive and negative side of the wire. But uh, those solder joints could easily be broken off. So be careful. The individuals that are providing the electronics, the contractor that D'Agostini has chosen to provide us the electrical components were obviously the lowest bidders because these components are very delicate and can break easily and not very well crafted in my opinion. So just keep that in mind. I mean, it, solder breaks and component failures like a capacitor could easily be replaced if you have the know-how but you know when you're buying a kit like this you expect everything to be working and and all of your pieces to have been properly inspected for and you know a certain amount or a high quality of quality assurance being applied to these to these pieces so so right now we're making our limiting switches uh, connections to the motor so when R2 turns his head it can only go so far before the switch disengages the motor and will prevent the the head from turning 360 degrees so that's what this part is so if you guys are cool with it I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the rest of this build portion for this stage it's more the same just making some electrical connections as the magazine calls them out and I want to uh, hurry up and get to the next portion of this video so we can start getting to the meat of the electronics and I'm gonna go ahead and jump ahead in time here through the magic of video editing and if anybody has any specific questions about this portion of the build feel free to write me and I'll fill in the blanks for you but that's pretty much it for issue number 70. All right, let's get going with issue number 71. So the moment we've all been waiting for, the electrical connections to our main electronics board that we received in issue number 67. And the gist of this issue is to make all of your electrical connections to this board so that we will be able to test out all the key functionality prior to assembly of the remainder of the ship going forward, including all the cockpit lighting, R2-D2's 
animatronics and lighting and S foil motor controllers that open and close the wings and by doing that you'll also be testing your remote control in the process so this is a pretty critical stage or a critical month of what your progress will be going forward with the rest of this model and one thing that all of you need to be aware of is that this particular part this circuit board with integrated circuit chips embedded into the board are very delicate the little white connectors or beige connectors that you see there on the board can easily be removed and can can be reattached in two different ways if you take a close look at this board you'll see that some of those terminals have been removed and if you were to put those back on the wrong way and they would go on the wrong way then your polarity would be off and some of these terminals like 2, 4, and 6 are marked but some of the others are not so you have to really be careful to reconnect things properly but let's go ahead and start off we're connecting the lower wings and I finished up the painting on this I know this is not the red 5 but uh, you guys know I'm doing the Corsac model so my wife and I we took care of the of the paint on the inside of the wings that will be harder to get to once the wings are installed so we got those done and next we connect the starboard and port upper wings and make those connections to your circuit board and the appropriate ports the next thing we do is to connect the engine gear box we are connecting the motor that's connected to the gearbox and then installing that into the body of the fuselage. And once everything's connected, you should have something that sort of resembles this little picture right here. You have everything nice and lined up and it takes a little bit of massaging to get that gearbox in place and everything all the teeth align to where the wings are perfectly flush with one another and standing out horizontally in, a, in its proper position all right issue number 72 here's where we make our final electrical connections and test our motors and lighting <laughs> Basically that sound means that my control board has failed and I had to completely take apart that assembly to do some basic troubleshooting. And I am getting power to the board but for some reason it, it is not responding to the remote control. So I put a lovely letter together for DiAugustini and asked them politely to send me a new control board. But I'm not optimistic. I was warned by Proteus W that he had a similar problem and has tried to order a new control board and he hasn't seen his yet, which isn't making me feel very good about the progress of this build. And like I said earlier that this issue right here or this stage is a determining factor whether or not you get to continue with your build or not. I'm sure they're going to continue to send me parts and pieces but I told them that I will be looking for a refund if I can't get these motors and lights working so I did receive a bit of good news that Falcon 3D parts has made a upgrade kit for the cockpit the D'Agostini X-Wing cockpit which is pretty cool and I went ahead and put this on order yeah, we've got some really nice photo etch parts available and uh, a little a little extra bling for the inside of the cockpit, which to me will have a pretty good end result there. Thanks to Martin Futter and London Sabers for bringing this to my attention.